great-grandfather bought the farm in 1932. My grandfather farmed it. My father farmed it for 30 years, I suppose. So I've farmed it for the last 20 years, I suppose. So. No, I had a fair idea I was going to go farming, really. I really gave up listening in school because I knew what I was going to do anyway. It's a bit soft still, I think. It has dried some since yesterday, I'd say. Monocropping, I don't think, was in Sioux Ireland. Hard to get the yield to stay up if you keep going back in year after year because you have other problems with maybe grass weeds and diseases. That, so I think it is good to mix it up a bit. So we're walking out, what's out in this field here? There's beans out here, yeah. I don't think they're much good for distilling now, but you can have a look at them if you want. <laughs> about a mile away from the sea here. This is one of the fields I'm going for Port Malt this year. Possibly go to Waterford Distillery. Depends on whether they like the protein in it or not. <laughs> It'll be ready to harvest just at a guess in about three weeks time I'd say. From what we can see it looks good at the moment. Yeah it does. It really comes down to protein then. Just hopefully there won't be too many small grains in it. I don't no, think screenings so won't be a problem anyway. It's a nice field to work in. My father bought this combine here, the Massey Ferguson 620, in England in 1980, and then subsequently sold it a few years later. We discovered it in a scrapyard in Wexford, about 20 years further on. So myself and my brother bought it back, and he spent the winter refurbishing it, and it's back working again now. And I went up to the house and said to my father, do you want to come out and have a spin over. He said, no thanks. <laughs> so that tells you the hard you got with it. <laughs> I still have the scars. 20 years later, he still didn't want to get back up on it. He came out and had a look over the hedge, I had, but he didn't want to get up on it. So that kind of says it all. <laughs> so we cut about four acres a year with it, maybe a couple of it until we get two hot sitting in it. Do you see where the dashboard is there, yeah. just beside the seat? Yeah. The engine is just underneath there. It's about 50 degrees centigrade in there when you work. Then we put it back in the shed for another year. We go back to the new one. We got tired of the Super 2, so we had to up update. Yeah, it's pretty high tech, yeah. It'll more or less cut the crop itself. Just press a few buttons and select what crop you want to harvest. Put in oats or spring barley and it follows the contour the ground itself, there's there's bands underneath the cutter bar that keep it cutting at the same height all the time. It's on tracks there to reduce the uh, soil compaction. It'll steer itself too if you want, so you can sit back and have your sandwiches and let it cut a few runs itself if you want. It costs about the same price as a three bedroom semi detached house maybe. It's quite stressful when that one stops though because the, the masses is not really had to keep up. Mm -hmm. 